it seems like that the the pandemic has actually been a catalyst for immense fast change um, from your perspective and from what you've said then if you've rolled the clock forward in terms of what technology to 2023 that means you've done it there's no reason why anybody else can't do the same no i and just to set the, the benchmark of where we came from we had we had thin client server desk based systems so we had eye gels um with you know sort of keyboards that were full of everybody's skin and crumbs and whatever else and mice that were sort of god knows what they had on them um and you know crappy screens that that you know sort of were I think they were previously black and white TVs or something. Uh, and, you know, so we moved from that to agile working and it doesn't cost much. And, and that's the other thing, you know, we've given, but we have given people really good devices. So our view is that if we're asking people to work agile, you need to give them really good kit. So yeah, they've got iPhones. Yeah. They've got surface pros. Yeah. Some, yeah. It's about giving people the right kit to do the job rather than just, Oh, we could save hundred quid per laptop by giving them, this crappy thing that will only last sort of 18 months and actually will start to slow down dreadfully 12 months in. Um, so I think it's about, about making the right investment, but also recognizing all the hidden costs that, that are in a, a traditional working sense. And so we, um, we priced up each of our desk spaces. So each of our desk spaces, we're around about 3,200 quid a desk space. And we had 500 and something of them. Um, and and actually, when we did the, the 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 review of how often those spaces were used, this is even well before lockdown, even before we rolled out agile working, it was only about thirty nine percent of the working week. So um, you have all that cost, but you have a utilization rate of less than fifty percent. It's like, well, why would you do that? Um, and so actually, what you you then sort of transpose to is, well, actually, if you can kit somebody out with the right kit for. I don't know, maybe say 1800 quid or whatever. Um, and you can remove that desk space cost. Actually, you're still making a net saving as a business. So, so what, you know, where's, where's all that set? And interestingly, you know, in terms of our running costs, the running costs, we've only got one office and just to run it. So no rent or anything because we own it, but just to run that office each month by not having it open, we're saving about 30 K a month. So you sort of think, well, Actually, I'd rather use that money to hire space in, in places that are more local to people, reducing your carbon footprint, but actually spaces that are more innovative and more creative and more dynamic and, and generate better ideas and make you feel a bit more sort of positive and upbeat. Um, because I, I'm, big on, I'm big on workspace psychology and, and the whole sort of thing about how, people, how people's surroundings impact upon how they are. Um, and I just, I've just seen a huge shift in how our people are. And so we did a, we, we do a snap survey um, every month or so with our colleagues. And our last snap survey actually said that uh, the overwhelming message was people felt better connected to Yorkshire housing as a family and as an organization than they ever had done before. And initially you think, how can that be when everybody's at home? That's, that's bizarre. But actually what it was, was that we have invested and we have thought and we have planned how we communicate in a much more rigorous way than we ever would do in a, in a, in a traditional setting. And so much so that we now refer to this as, as two timelines. So we have BC, um, but it's, it's not relation to, to, to uh, Jesus, it's relation to COVID. So we have life with BC before COVID and we have AD, which is um, our head office is called Dyson's Chambers. So it's after Dyson's. So it's about the back and the forward look, but in a time using the timeline terminology that, that most people recognize. Um, and it is about sort of that whole approach to sort of saying, well, we're now in 2023. We're not in 2020. All the things that we plan to do, we've not had to do, which is great because that saved us a whole raft of, of investment in working space and, and kit. Um, but actually now, how do, we, how do we continue that momentum and move forward to where we wanted to be in 2025 and beyond?